October, on my Wednesday streams, I beat Shadowrun, Dead Man Switch, the first of the campaigns that Hairbrain Screams put out for their Shadowrun PC games. Because I didn't do a Let's Play on the game, I figure I might as well give my thoughts on it in the context of a more conventional video review. All the footage in this review will be taken from my stream, so you'll be seeing some of my streaming overlay in this footage. The game is set in around 2050 in the Shadowrun timeline, the sort of baseline for the first edition of the Shadowrun tabletop game. Your player character is a Shadowrunner, an urban mercenary for hire in the cyberpunk fantasy world of Shadowrun. You end up coming to Seattle after your main character's friend, Sam Watts, is murdered by the Emerald City Ripper, a serial killer who is terrorizing Seattle. However, your friend also used to run the shadows before retiring, so he put together a dead man switch. An insurance policy that if he were to die due to foul play, would send a message to you, offering you a job to find out who killed him and deal with the situation. Investigating this murder will lead the player character discovering that the Ripper was being backed by the Universal Brotherhood, a cult that Sam's sister Jessica is a member of, and the UB itself has its own terrifying agenda, one that will lead the player character running into some of the biggest movers and shakers in the world of Shadowrun. If you're familiar with the setting of the Shadowrun role-playing game, as soon as I mention the Universal Brotherhood, you could probably guess where this is going. If you don't know, and want to avoid for spoilers, don't Google search Universal Brotherhood and Shadowrun. Though there are probably enough New Age spiritualist movements and cults that use that term, that you'd probably find a whole bunch of other stuff too. The Shadowrun Returns engine uses an isometric camera perspective, which is controlled strictly with the mouse. General wandering around is in real time, with most environments having stationary NPCs, and combat gets turn-based in plays like XCOM, with players generally only having a couple of actions per turn, with various spells, combat drugs, and cybernetic enhancements granting additional actions. On top of your regular combat environments, occasionally some missions will send any deckers, the Shadowrun term for hackers, into various computer systems to disable security systems and steal any pay data that you can fence for additional money. Decking works on a slightly different time scale than regular combat with two turns inside a computer mapping for a similar number of turns in the real world. That's pretty much how it maps in the tabletop game, but the abstraction here in the computer in theory and form makes running deckers a lot more manageable than it can sometimes get in tabletop in this bookkeeping and keeping track of different timetables and that sort of thing. That said, while this is an adaptation of a tabletop role-playing game in video game form, Shadowrun Returns Dead Man Switch doesn't have the same degree of narrative agency for your player character that other tabletop RPG video game adaptations have. If your skills are good enough, there are some infiltrations you can talk your way through instead of firefighting your way through, but there's no room here for the level of creativity that you can get in a Deus Ex game and your actions don't have a real impact on the outcome of the game's story. Your character has an impact on the world, but it's a scripted, linear impact. That said, because the game doesn't give out experience points or karma based on combat, and instead rewards the character strictly based on completing various objectives, that means you're also not losing out on possible power by, choosing, by not choosing violent options. There is one side quest where you're basically given the choice between an option that will give you more money and an option that might get you some more karma, but otherwise that's it. Also, it bears mentioning that Shadowrun Returns doesn't implement the karma system in quite the same way that it was used in the tabletop game. In the tabletop game, you have a karma pool drawn originally from directly from your karma points, then later based on the number of karma points that you've earned over your character's career, that can be used to boost your upcoming dice rolls from everything still checks to damage, or to re-roll previous dice if you partially fail to check. There is no mechanic like that here. Considering that the game is turn-based for its combat, it feels like a missed opportunity to give the player the ability to rewind their last action or two a couple times per combat environment, or re-roll a skill check, similar to some of the special actions in Super Robot Wars. Ultimately, I feel like Dead Man Switch works as a introduction to the game's engine. Dragonfall, the second campaign, which I'm currently playing as of this recording in December, provides much more freedom for the player and does a better job of showcasing what the game's engine can do. 
not just in terms of graphics or storytelling, but also in terms of having a variety of narrative options for handling handling uh, quests and that sort of thing. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.